Okay. So the subject of the shiur, the subject of the shiur is um, on a very fa- um, a rather famous topic. It has to do with the, the question of why should a person be a good person besides for keeping the halakha. Someone can keep halakha, he can keep Torah 100% and he can still be a bad person. In other words, he can keep the laws and 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 within keeping the laws may not be a good person. So, we'll start with the most famous view and the most accepted view which is Ramban, Nachmanides. Nachmanides creates... Nachmanides, he says on um, the Pasuk in Parshat Kedoshim, Kedoshim Tiyu. Firstly, Rashi says, what does it mean? Kedoshim Tiyu, you should be holy. It means that you should separate yourself from Arayot, forbidden relations, Umina Avera, and from sin. Shakol Makom, Shatamotse Geder Erva, Atamotse Kedusha. Because any place where you find a separation, a um, boundary from Erva, uh, forbidden relations, is. Um, um, you find holiness. Now, Ramban, now that's a very... S- Erva. 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 Erva pirusho eh, arayot. Um, okay, so, Ramban, however, takes this a much step, step further. He says that Kirushim Tiyu is talking about even something which is permitted. In other words, Rashi is telling you that something is forbidden, and you make Kedoshim to you is telling you separate yourself, distance yourself as much as you can from forbidden relations. Now Ramban comes along and says, no, 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 no. Even if it's permitted, such as eating and drinking, and so on, eating and drinking, or, or relations that are permitted to you, don't overdo it, and, and, and you should control yourself, and you should not be parutz, and you shouldn't now, he calls this Naval Birshut Torah. And if I could give another example of Naval Birshut Torah, because people apply it very widely. Another example of Naval Birshut Torah is a person is only obligated to provide the physical needs of the child until six years of age. Now, if he doesn't provide past six years of age, he's Naval Birshut Torah. He's, he's lowly, he's doing the wrong things, but with the permission of the Torah, within the Halakha Torah, meaning law, literally. So, like any opinion, so basically, what we are talking about here, what Ramban is talking about here is morality. He's saying that morality, Kedoshim to you is saying to be moral. Now, like any opinion on this topic, and there are numerous opinions, so every opinion has its upsides and its downsides. So, the obvious questions that come on Ramban, is the first question is, why did it, if this is the, the real meaning, why does... No, the, why did it take till Ramban for someone to give this meaning of Kedoshim to you? No one gives this meaning before Ramban. That's the first point. The second point is, this question of Naval Barishut the Torah, and someone being a bad person in the Torah, um, um, even though he's keeping Torah, is such an obvious question, why is Ramban the first to ask it? Also, also, we, why don't we, so, so, since we don't find this explanation before, and no one's asking this question, so it must be that before him, they never had the question. There must have been a different answer. I mean, it's not necessarily so, but we'll see that that, that is the case. In fact, if we actually carefully read Ramban, which we can't do now, but when we compare it to the view of morality that was common in the times in Christian uh, uh, Europe, we'll find that they're very, very, very similar. So in other words, Ramban was taking from his society and applying it to Torah, which isn't inherently wrong. But now let's see what the other other views are. Rambam doesn't, no one, as I said, no one explicitly discusses this in the Rambam. But Rambam, on the other hand, he says, how, to, how does one be a good person outside of Halakha? In Hilchot Deot, he discusses what's known as the Shvil Hazahav, the golden mean. It is basically a person who knows, who wants to be a good person, he should see that the extremes of any attribute, any midah, any uh, type of uh, uh, way a person behaves, and he should always go moderate. He should be moderate. 
And except for some cases where he brings from Chazal, that Chazal say, like for example, be very, very, um, uh, hu- uh, have a lot of humility. You shouldn't be moderate about humility, you should be very humble. And um, similarly, um, about uh, anger, you should never get angry ever, and only when you have to pretend to be angry, and so on. Essentially, the underlying factor of Rambam's view of ha- what makes a person a good person is not morality, but responsibility. A responsible person is a moderate person. A moral person is not necessarily moderate, right? But a responsible person is moderate. It's 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 it's, it's an outcome of responsibility. Similarly, a person who is responsible is responsible for himself, for others, and responsibility towards God. But nonetheless, now you have another question. Ramban, of course, he's bringing Kedoshim to you, and he's projecting onto it a concept. But it's not a concept. Now, I don't know how to be moral from the Torah. Because if you're going to say that something that's mutar, something that's totally mutar, I also have to separate myself from not just something that is a suru, like Rashi explains it, but also something that is mutar, well then, it could be anything. It's not based on the Torah. Similarly, Harambam, even though it makes 100% sense, and you could t- probably find it it's, uh, in a number of sources in Chazal, nonetheless, it's not so incredibly Torah-based. The Kavana is correct, the responsibility, right? And being moderate. And you can find it in Chazal and so on. So here is where we bring in the third opinion, Ralph Bag. And Ralph Bag is different from both, but at the same time, his system works with Rambam, not so much with Rambam. Ralph Bag, in his Peticha to his Perushan Torah, he essentially says that firstly, no one can ever fully understand Torah, but we are forced to, to divide Torah into three points. What, what, what do we get out of Torah? So the third point is also relevant to us, but we'll do the first two points. The first point, which is the mainly um, the main part of the Torah by far, Torah meaning law, is the Tariyag Mitzvot. Tariyag Mitzvot meaning all the commandments. That's what we have to keep, right? Torah, and that's the main part of Torah. Nonetheless, there's a second part, and this is, as he calls it, Hachelik Hamakiv Hachma Hamidinit. The, uh, the, the, uh, which really means uh, is the part which regards the way a person behaves. In other words, how a person behaves outside of the law. Because we just said, there's the law, and now there's a second part. So what is the second part according to Ral Bag? Ral Bag's uh, view is that since if obviously, if obviously there's the laws, right, and that's the main part, so then what's the purpose of all the stories? In Tanakh. What's the purpose of all the stories? I don't need the stories, just give me the law. Rather, he says like this, there's a lot of things which should be laws, but they can't be because it would be too hard to keep. And these are things about how a person should behave. So for example, when we look in the Torah and we see that someone did something wrong, and as an outcome of it, something bad happened, that because that person was irresponsible, again, responsibility, not morality, well, bug is like Haramba about responsibility, whereas Ramban is morality. We will see that if someone is being responsible, is being irresponsible, then there's irresponsible outcomes. He's responsible, there are responsible outcomes, which is why the Jewish philosophers didn't understand Schar Mitzvah Mitzvah and Schar Avera Avera as the reward of a Mitzvah a Mitzvah, but they understood it as the outcome. The outcome of doing a responsible thing, a mitzvah, is that you will do more responsible things. And the outcome of doing an irresponsible thing, an avera, is that you will keep on doing irresponsible things. Hence, hence, we find this divide. Yeah? Now, Ral Bag, however, Ral Bag's view is completely and totally based on Torah. Ral Bag generally, as a side point, gets attacked for being not so incredibly religious, for being more a philosopher than 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 than, than, than religious, which is why people call his books his book Milchamot Hashem, the wars of Hashem. They call it Milchamot Neged Hashem, the wars against Hashem. But these people they don't understand Ral Bag how deeply religious he was to the extent that he saw human responsibility as all coming out of all those Torah. But essentially, he and Rambam both agree that what it is that he makes a person be a good person. Is not morality, but responsibility. <coughs> we see this also in the way the difference, there's a divide in how to understand the Avera that Adam Harishon and, and Chavad did. The Mukubalim, the Kabbalists, very correctly point out 
that what we are in, the situation we're in, where we're not in a very perfect world, is the caused by Adam HaRishon's sin. Right? However, what was it really that caused us to get the punishment that, we're, that he was chucked out of Gan Eden, that we're all suffering? So, even though, of course, both sides of the coin, whether you believe in responsibility, like the Jewish philosophers, or you bring, believe in morality, like Ramban and in general the Kabbalists, um, they both will try to understand what was the big deal about eating the fruit. The, the philosophers see that why was Adam HaRishon kicked out of Gan Eden? Not because they ate from the fruit, but because rather when Hashem came to ask them, why did you do it? They didn't accept responsibility. Teshuvah. They didn't accept responsibility and they pushed the responsibility onto someone else. So, so for example, the Kabbalists will explain how we still do the same Avera of eating from the fruit essentially through different ways, different mystical ways. Whereas the philosophers explain, no, we do the same Avera as Adam Rishon, that we don't expect, accept responsibility for our actions and we don't do Teshuvah. Teshuvah means accepting responsibility. Yeah. Why it is so conventional, acceptable in, in, in the whole community that Adam and Eve got kicked out because they ate him? You know what I mean? So okay, yeah, so basically, so that, as I said at the beginning, Ramban's view, in general the view of the mystics, is what is more common nowadays, is that there is a morality in Judaism. However, if you look historically, um, in, in both in uh, Islam and in Judaism, we don't find a source which discusses morality. Essentially, Ramban uh, shoehorns the idea of morality into uh, the word Kedoshim Tihiyu, right? Whereas, even though responsibility doesn't fit either, in fact, it's completely irrelevant to Kedoshim Tihiyu, we do continually find the idea of responsibility underlying the intentions behind what people do. Therefore, therefore, you see that there's a very that these two different things. Now, the problem with now let's look at the problem with the current conventional view of morality. The problem with morality is that no one can define what is and isn't moral. It's whatever people say is moral, right? But they say it's immoral, it's immoral, right? But in Ramban's case, what happens even more is if you take into account his uh, famous remark on the Shabbaton or basically powers given to the rabbis, essentially Ramban gives a green card to rabbis to say what is and isn't immoral. And since he says that this is a Doraita, Kedoshim Tiyu, essentially within the, the um, framework of Ramban's Kedoshim Tiyu, a, a rabbi can come along and say this is immoral. And this is wrong. And you can say, And I've seen people say this about all types of things. They say it about having a phone which is in a kosher phone. They say it about having internet without a filter. Even if the person 100% doesn't use it for the wrong things, he's still called a Naval Why? Because they say it's immoral. So, okay, fine. But the, the problem is with that is that when there's, there's no end of the Torah. Whereas responsibility, every person knows in his mind how I can be responsible to myself, responsible to, my, to others, responsible to society, responsible to God, because he knows what is harmful and what is not. Whereas morality sometimes can be harmful, because it comes from feelings, the feelings of the people, that this is right and this is wrong. Right? So, um, um, he's, a, he's a fascinating example. Um, uh, just another example of where things can go a bit awry. Um, so, someone who prefers uh, um, to eat uh, uh, coffee from a non-kosher, uh, a, a non-Jewish store, sorry. It's kosher, yeah, and he prefers it to taste better. So sometimes you find some people who say, oh, well, there's a kosher store, why doesn't he get from there? Well, he prefers from the, from the, from the non-Jewish store. It's a better coffee, better quality. And they say, no, 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 you should have gone from the Jewish store, and this and that. That's the same idea. Whereas someone who thinks responsibility doesn't think that way. If he thinks that the point is being a responsible, good person, uh, you know, to himself and to God, he knows that as long as I'm keeping the halakha, I don't think something wrong here. Similarly, someone who's responsible, yeah, just like someone who's moral, I agree, someone who's moral, they will provide for their child past six years old, right? Um, but nonetheless, the question is, what is more relevant to our nowadays society, and what helps us move forward, what helps us civilize ourselves? Morality is regressive, it's very conservative, 
it doesn't, it doesn't, it's very hard to change and no one can really explain all of it. Whereas, on the other hand, responsibility is very progressive. You can see what is responsible at this point of time, maybe more responsible at that point of time. And also, it's something that can stand up to judgment. Okay, someone can judge whether something is responsible or not. You can't judge whether something is moral or immoral. So essentially, so that is a very basic introduction to the concept, to the debate that is um, uh, morality versus responsibility in in Judaism. Um, yeah. So just to go over that one point, it's not that Ralbag and Ramban disagree; they don't disagree because the the same underlying principle applies to both. Except both have a different way of seeing it. Rambam's is being moderate, right, which makes sense. Rambam's is, well, let's look in, in, in Tanakh, see the bad outcomes of, of irresponsible things, the good outcomes of responsible things. We look in the stories of Tanakh and we learn from that um, how to be responsible uh, human beings. Well, did he bring up uh, King David? <coughs> Who? Does uh, Rambam bring, bring up King David? In his Haqdamah. the classic one. No, he doesn't, he doesn't bring up in the but I'm sure plenty to discuss yeah, there as well. A lot of them saying that every word, and you know, when our, our rabbi in Brisbane was teach us, you know, they, every word in the in the Torah, in the Tanakh, you know, in the Punash, is got meaning. The, yeah. the, 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 because it is the Yad Hashem, right? Yeah. Every word has got meaning. And it's not it's not being said uh, for not for, you know morale. <coughs> Or, or responsibility that both of them existing, you know. Yeah, so okay, so so um it's not really entirely relevant here, but Ral says is the point that everything has a meaning and you can never understand the formula of Torah, but we are required to, in order to understand it as much as we can, we're required to divide the Torah into essentially three parts. Law, um uh our responsibility, essentially as I said before, the what helps us be good people, and the third part is actually um, got to do with with um, wisdom and deeper understanding the uh, uh, philosophy and and, and so on. So so yeah, that's of course. Now another point about morality is very important to understand. Even someone who is responsible will accept that there is a morality. There is a reason why I feel it is right to be responsible, other than the fact that being irresponsible causes you harm. Right? Other than that. Somewhere deep down, there has to be some idea that right is right and wrong is wrong. That is a that is a, a human trait. I think that that God gave man. Nonetheless, when it comes to details of what is and isn't moral or immoral, or responsible or irresponsible, that's where the whole debate comes in. What is what? What should I do? What shouldn't I do? And so on. Uh, and just a small side point is that the pro the another problem of morality is that you may find that if a whole society accepts a moral idea, then they may start accepting new restrictions, which the Torah doesn't actually say. We find this very, very often. There are restrictions that Nova says in, in Halakha, no Torah, and they add it on, and it becomes like Halakha, which is sort of like adding mitzvah, it's sort of like adding laws. So that's a very, very um, a bad thing. But if you believe that the basis of responsibility and irresponsibility, well, you don't need to make new laws. And you won't make new laws. You have no need to act. So Bezrat Hashem, well, um, nowadays, where in my personal opinion, the, the more correct approach is the approach of responsibility. Bezrat Hashem, nowadays, we should all learn to be responsible human beings and to serve Hashem. Baruch Adonai Amen, amen, amen.